The general method in searching for the determinant of a big matrix is Laplace cofactor expansion. Check out the step-by-step -step procedure here in Numerical Solutions to see problems. The premise is a 5 by 5 matrix with the following elements. A tip to reduce the computation is to look for an element valued at 0. There are two zeros in the matrix, one at element 33 and another at element 41. From element 33, we can take the third row or the third column. From element 41, we can also use the fourth row or the first column. With four options, we study the scalars. The third row has 2, negative 1, 0, 2, and 1. The elements in the third column are 1, 2, 0, negative 1, and another negative 1. Those from the fourth row are 0, negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 3. Then the first column has elements 3, negative 1, 2, 0, and 2. The simplest set of scalars is found at the third column, and let's use just that. The first thing to do is to identify the signs of the third column. So with positive sign on A11, element 12 is negative, then another positive for element 13. From here on, we can place the signs of the elements in the third column. Those are negative for element 2, 3, then positive with 0, another negative with negative 1, and last is positive for the bottom element. Now let's outline the reduced matrices. The first term has positive 1 for a scalar. Then negative 2 precedes the second term. The third term has 0 as a scalar, then minus negative 1 connects the fourth term. The fifth term is preceded by plus negative 1. With the five terms to solve for the determinant, check that the third term has 0 as a scalar, which makes the whole term 0. The reduced 4 by 4 matrix starts by providing the minors and that is by covering the column and the first row. The minors make up the determinant in the first term. Now covering the second row also completes the elements to be used for the second term. Next is the third term which we eliminated earlier as it would result to zero. Then covering the fourth row also completes the elements for the determinant in the fourth term. The fifth term has a determinant with elements found after covering the fifth row. So now, we have four matrices in reduced 4 by 4 order. Although the matrix is already reduced, fourth order still can be solved using shortcut methods. So we needed to reduce the matrices once more to reach order 3. Focusing on the first term, we again choose a column or row to use where having a zero-valued element can reduce the procedure. Let's use the third row. We then add the alternating signs starting with plus on A11, minus on element A21, element A31 has plus followed by minus on element 32 then another plus on element 33, and then minus on the following element. We can then identify the outline of the 3 by 3 matrices. Then again, cover the first column to complete the determinant of the first term of the 4 by 4 matrix again. Covering the second column, 
we would then find the elements for the second term determinant. With the third column covered, we get the elements for the third term determinant. Then covering the fourth column leaves the elements for the last term determinant. Now, consider focusing on the first term. This is preceded by a zero-valued scalar, making the term zero. Having completed all the 3 by 3 matrices, we can then solve the determinant of the first term. By using Saris rule, we can solve for the determinants of the small matrices. For us to avoid the messy board, we would number each term. The second term, numbered as 1, provides the determinant multiplied by minus negative 2. Diagonals have negative 1, 2, 4, then 3, 1, negative 2, and negative 2, 3, 2. The negatives start from negative 2, 2, negative 2, then 2, 3, 4, and negative 1, 3, 1. Add all diagonals and subtract all antidiagonals. Simplify the expression and get negative 55. Computation 2 has a scalar of 1. Then the diagonals have negative 1, negative 1, 4, then 1, 1, and negative 2. Lastly, negative 2, 1, and 2. The antidiagonals have negative 2, negative 1, and negative 2, then 2, 1, and 4, also negative 1, 1, and 1. If the expression is simplified, the positives minus the negatives give negative 5. Determinant 3 has minus 3 as a scalar. Then the determinant is computed as negative 1, negative 1 and 3, then 1, 2, and negative 2, with 2, 1, and 3. Its antidiagonals are negative 2, negative 1, and 3, then 2, 1, and 3, also 1, 2, and negative 1. This can be simplified as negative 5. With their scalars, the three small terms become negative 100. And then again, there is another scalar for the first term, that is positive 1. So 1 times negative 100 is negative 100. The second term will also be computed similar to the first. Look for zero element, and that is in the third row again. Zero has a positive sign. Negative 2 keeps a negative sign. 1 is positive, and 3 is negative. With the outline already shown, cover the first column and get the elements for the first 3 by 3 term. Now cover the second column to complete the second term determinant. Take note that the scalar is minus negative 2. Having the third column covered, the third term determinant has the elements 3, 2, negative 1, then 2, negative 1, and 1, then negative 2, 1, and 4. With the last column covered, the remaining elements will comprise the fourth term with minus 3 as their scalar. With four terms already completed with 3 by 3 matrices, we can now use Saris rule or butterfly method in solving the individual determinants. The first term has 0 as its scalar, so the term is cancelled out. The second term is tagged as 1, and the others follow. For determinant 1, we have minus negative 2 as its scalar with the diagonals as 3, 2, and 4, then 5, 1, and negative 2, and negative 1, 3, and 2. The negatives come from the products of negative 2, 2, and 1, then 2, 5, and 4, and also 3, 3, and 1. 
the first determinant can be simplified as negative 45. For the second determinant, positives are 3, negative 1, and 4, with 2, 1, and negative 2, and also negative 1, 1, and 2. The antidiagonals contain negative 2, negative 1, and negative 1, then 2, 2, and 4, and also 3, 1, and 1. These products can be simplified into negative 35. The last term has a determinant with diagonals consisting of 3, negative 1, and 3, then 2, another 2, and negative 2, and also 5, 2, and 1. Its antidiagonals have negative 2, negative 1, and 5, also 2, 2, and 3, and then 3, 1, and 2. They can be simplified into negative 35. So multiply their respective scalars and have a total of negative 20. But then again, the whole second term has another negative 2 scalar. So negative 2 multiplied by negative 20 is positive 40. Again, the third term in the 4 by 4 matrices series is zeroed out. So the next term to consider is the fourth. We don't see any zero element here anymore, so choose a row or column with the simplest elements. In that case, we consider the second column, which has a lot of ones. Place the alternating signs starting with negative 2 with 2, positive with 1, then negative for negative 1, and another positive for 1. Continue with covering the first row and fill out the elements for the first term of the 3 by 3 determinant. With the second row covered, we can also complete the minors in the second term. Covering the third row, elements 3, 5, negative 1, then another negative 1, 3, and negative 2, with negative 2, 3, and 4, are the elements for the third term determinant. So we cover the last row and get the remaining elements as minors for the last determinant. Completing the fourth term matrix, we can again solve them using any one of the shortcut methods. This time, we number each term from 1 to 4. For the first determinant, we have minus 2 as a scalar. The diagonals are negative 1, 2, and 4, then 3, 1, and negative 2, with negative 2, 2, and 3. The antidiagonals have negative 2, 2, and negative 2, also 2, 3, and 4, with negative 1, 3, and 1. Simplify the expression and arrive at negative 55. For the second determinant, diagonals have 3, 2, and 4, then 5, 1, and negative 2, then negative 1, 2, and 3. The negatives are taken from negative 2, 2, and negative 1, with 2, 5, and 4, and then 3, 3, and 1, which can be simplified into negative 45. The third determinant has diagonals of 3, 3, 4, plus 5, negative 2, and negative 2, and also negative 1, another negative 1, and 3. Its antidiagonals carry negative 2, 3, and negative 1, another negative 1, 5, and 4, then 3, negative 2, and 3. Simplify them to get positive 91. Then the last 3 by 3 determinant is solved from 3, 3, and 1, with 5, negative 2, and 3, then negative 1, another negative 1, and 2. The negatives are from 2, 3, and negative 1, negative 1, 5, and 1, 
and also 3, 2, and negative 2. They are simplified as positive 14. Add all simplifications with their respective scalars and get 170. Now back to the original 4x4 four four term, we have a scalar of minus negative 1 multiplied by 170 to have positive 170. Now the fifth term is our next focus. Instead of taking the zero element, let's take the second column just the same, but the determinant should still be equal. So have the signs negative for 2, positive for 1, negative for negative 1, and positive for negative 2. Covering the first row will show the elements of the first determinant. Covering the second row completes the determinant for the second term. Do the same with the third column and have the third term completed. With the fourth row covered, we can also identify the elements for the fourth term. With four terms already complete, let's again use a shortcut method to solve for the determinants in each term. The first term has expression 1, which has the diagonals negative 1, 2, and 3, with 3, 1, and 0, and also negative 2, 2, and 1, with the anti-diagonals starting with 0, 2, and negative 2, also 2, 3, and 3, with negative 1, 1, and 1. The expression is then simplified as negative 27. The second term can be computed by multiplying the diagonals with 3, 2, and 3, then 5, 1, and 0, and also negative 1, 2, and 1. The anti-diagonals have 0, 2, and negative 1, then 2, 5, and 3, and also 3, 1, and 1, again simplified into negative 17. The third expression also follows the same diagonals and anti-diagonals multiplications, which can be simplified into positive 49. The last term has plus negative 2 as a scalar, and also follows the same procedure, so the simplification is plus negative 2 times 14. Add all of the simplified expressions and get 58. This result is then multiplied by plus negative 1, the scalar of the fifth term. Then we get negative 58. Finally, we are down to finding the determinant of the 5 by 5 matrix, which we reduced into 5 4 by 4 matrices, where 1 is reduced to 0. The first term has been simplified as negative 100 the second has positive 40, the third is 0, fourth has positive 170, and the fifth yielded negative 58. Determinant G is then negative 100 plus 40 plus 0 plus 170 and minus 58 to get positive 52.